city of storms fall where the storm kings have ruled as long as time. Seven watchtowers mark the borders of this unwalled metropolis. You've heard Illichal multiple times talk of the towers of guard, these, these seven outpost-like towers that surround the city in a giant semicircle outside of the mountain down into the storm basin. So there's this, this is just nice swoop down into the into the basin. You can see the city itself rests nestled right into the Storm Rage Mountains. Looming above the city, like titans of stone, are the cliffs in the mountainside of the Storm Rage themselves. Waterfalls and cascades sparkle in the slowly diminishing sunlight. The shadow of the mountains is cast over the city as it is late in the afternoon, and it is the sun is slightly to the south. The open basin suddenly gives way. You have the towers of garden in the open basin suddenly gives way to the outer city. Without seeming rhyme or reason, just suddenly there are homes and businesses and taverns and inns. It is just city done. with small roads popping out into the basin. Kingsguard checkpoints mark the entrances of the west road, the north road, and you can see far across the city, the east road, where it comes into the city on the opposite side. You can see where the city divides down in the basin. As you are slightly above, you can see where the city divides slightly and the inner city, or the old city, as it is sometimes called, often called by, by some residents, rises slightly above the new city, the outer city. The buildings of the inner city, or the old city, like stone elders watching over their children behind them all. And then at the back of the city itself, nestled right into the mountain itself, right into the major mountain, into the cliffside, is the fortress of the Stormborn, where Alric III, Stormborn, sits upon the throne and looks out to the north and upon his entire domain. You can see along the walls of the fortress itself, among the castle, this uh, concentric castle that you can tell, you can tell there are multiple walls before you get to the keep. You see the banners of the Storm King. You see the silver and blue of the Storm King with the, with the open hand and the lightning bolt. And it is, it is breathtaking. It is stunning. You've noticed the activity picking up of people and, and carts and things. You're like, oh, we must be close to the city. But it is immediate. It is the forest gives way to the basin, gives way to the city itself. And it's the largest city you have seen. Al Alphonse, it's the largest city you've seen in this world. It'll call it the largest city you've seen ever. You've been here before, though. And Pilate, it is the largest city you've seen, as far as you are aware. And each of you is taken aback. Alphonse, you are taken aback by the, the majesty of this. This is, this is what you're used to. This is, where you're, this is like what your family is from. This is a capital. This is a real city. There are magi. There are royals there are people of power live in this city and you can feel it pilot you're taken aback by just this sheer multitude of people that have to be here just people of every shape and color and race and all those pockets full of money probably you read my mind <laughs> in illicol Having been here before, your breath is still taken away. Because at the edge of the city, on the west road, is an encampment of tents and huts and other temporary structures, all bearing the symbol of the clan of the Verdofu. Illicol, welcome home. How far are they? Probably like a half mile. It's it's I'm it's a talking, distance into the city. He's he's fucking going for it. There's probably a check mark, but he's like walking faster. They are outside of the checkpoint. Yep. You oh, okay? Yeah. No, he's just fucking going for it then. <laughs> <laughs> you guys 
I follow. As far as you two are aware, this is that's normal. Like this is this this encampment with these structures and these the symbol, the symbol of this like lone mountain. That's it's normal. Like you just weird. There's just always this encampment outside. It'll call takes off. It'll call you you're running. And they're as you get closer, you're seeing you're seeing people move in between. And they are all seven feet tall, eight feet tall, broad of shoulder, markings, tattoos. It's your it's your family. It's your clan. They're all here. Everyone's here. That doesn't make sense. It's not the right time of year. You don't, it's that like as you're running in, like as that like energy, like all those little alarm bells are ticking. It's the wrong time of year. They shouldn't be this far south. They shouldn't be this far west, east. Shouldn't be this far east. They shouldn't, there are lots of like shouldn'ts, but at the same time, you're consumed because family, they're here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you see your sister at the airport in a town that you're not supposed to be in, neither of you supposed to be there. This is your family. It's cool. As you two try to keep up, you are both slower than Illicol. A pilot, you're you're mm -hmm. a little faster. Pilot than is Illicol canonically faster. You're canonically faster, but in this moment, Illicol's stride and excitement takes you by surprise, and Illicol gets a little bit of a gain. Alphonse, you're <laughs> not built for this. You're you're a natural speed walker. <laughs> <laughs> Illicol, you you reach the the border of the encampment. There, there's a few. There's an there's an elderly Goliath sitting on a sitting on a rock, sharpening uh, a spear, like a hunting spear. Uh, it's you you noticing like all of this. I mean, this is this is your clan. This is this is how you set up camp. It's just why are they here? Nobody never has the whole clan come to the city at the same time, and it appears mm. like everyone is here. I assume I recognize people. Yeah, they're, I mean, and as you, you pull up, like, people are, like, looking up, and they're like, Illicol? Illicol, welcome, what, what brings you here? And, like, just, I mean, it's, it's like, cousins and family friends and all kinds of people. Are you, are you looking for, are you looking for your family specifically? Yeah, or? I'm working for my family. Like, someone says, your, your, your tent, your family's tent is, it's, it's just, it's almost by the by the, the entrance to the city. Thank you, my friend, and it is good to see you. He says, "It's good to see you, cousin." <laughs> and like that's that's kind of like your claim. Like you all kind of refer to each other. Like cousin is like mm -hmm. a. It's, it's like a, a friendly family, thing. Even if you're not like you're not legitimately cousins. Like everybody's a cousin because mm -hmm. like we're all we're all Elias here. Let's go. Like it's like calling like your your best friend's dad uncle so and so kind of thing. Like. It's kind of that everybody's cousin but as you um follow that direction you find your your family's larger tent um it's not exactly a tent it's like a big it's a big thing like it's tall mm. it's it's propped up by like an actual like center post and outside sitting at a campfire sharpening a, a hunting spear getting ready or maybe it's a javelin uh, looking like ready to go hunt for the evening for some reason outside of the city is your sister. Which one? Ilithea. Ilithea. Your twin. <laughs> Ilithea. Ilithea, it is good to see you. She looks up. She... Ilicol! And she just like jump, jumps up mm -hmm. and just like, it. you guys pilot and Alphonse in following this. you never seen two Goliaths hug? But you feel like it hurt. <laughs> like, if it wasn't, like, you feel like the, the amount of force applied between these two humanoid beings is enough to crush something. And it's just this embrace of family that haven't seen each other in quite a while. It's like, oh, what are you... Where... Why are you... you we heard you have been traveling farther to the north. What's going on? We thought I, you were... I'm headed to Storm's Fall. I, I'm with a group of travelers. What are, but what are what is the entire clan doing here? There, you don't know. I have not seen family in months. Okay. Where is is mother here? Yes, she is. 
come with me. Uh, and you see like her expression turn and this twin share a bond and you can tell her the excitement at seeing you and everything is there's there was a strange amount of relief and now there's this worry that is parted into her face and she's come with me and she leads you, you to the tent and she opens opens the like flap and goes mother Ilikal is here and you hear your mother say, please come in and you as you you duck into the tent your mother sits up out of bed uh, out, of, out of bed roll and she goes my son and she like reaches up to you with her right hand and you realize she's bandaged all across her upper torso and she she has no left hand to reach with no left arm. She is absolutely from the shoulder across the rib cage, all around is just bandaged all the pieces, and she even has like a few places along the left side of her face that look. It looks like frostbite almost a little bit. Like it looks like healing frostbite. Yeah, I, I go kneel beside her and take her hand. She goes, "Oh, it's so lovely to see you." And she like she reaches out her face she, and like she she pulls you in and, and hugs and still all the strength of of that matron matronly power. She goes, "I'm so glad you're safe." M Mother, what happened? What she... frost white dragon? The the ranging grounds. We were attacked. Uh yeah. <laughs> You called it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we managed to... We, we didn't see it coming at all. Uh, and, and, like, she... Like, you like you tell, like, it still hasn't said in that it's it's still there's a phantom limb. So that she, she moves as if, like, she's trying to use both hands for things. She's, as... As... It came. We all we we stood. Those who could stood in our way or stood in its way, and it, as it attacked, it, it came for it came for everything. It came for the for the herds, for the for the animals, for us. And those who could stand in its way did, as as many of us escaped. All some did not. We're we're so lucky. We're so lucky that those of us who could get away could. But mother is 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 Orima okay? Yes. We've we were all able to get out. Uh, some of the other members of the clan, uh, Arak and Ithinil, and and young Ormar. They, they didn't make it out. Uh, and of course, <laughs> and like you see her, she like gestures, and it would be like a, a shrug with both hands, but it's just a shrug. It's it's it's, and she just says, "It's not. You can't always block all of the frost, and protecting your sisters." The, the cold was too much and I, I lost the arm but I'm still here it was very can... brave of you mother it's just anything for family and I... you, you see her, she's angry she's like and, and she's got this eye of like I'm not letting the, that fucking dragon go either I'm coming for him I I believe I encountered the same white dragon a few a few days ago just north of the mountains. Yes, he's moved into our territory. We don't we don't understand. He's not It's not like others we've seen. He, he's angrier. He's more primal. He was bloodthirsty. He he chased my companions and I. We barely made it out with our lives. 
that is why the tribe is coming this way. We we came we came south, and then we thought potentially we could petition the king to help send soldiers and others. He's this menace, she says, angry, could be problematic for all. Not just our people, do, but his as well. I will do whatever I can to help with this threat. You know that. Of course. For the family. She says, but that's that's too much. She said, let us eat. Let us, let us celebrate your, your coming. We can... It's so good to have the family back together again. Please join us for join us for dinner. It is it's a little early for dinner, but she says we'll celebrate. We'll are reuniting truly. And she she tries to stand up and she goes to stand up and she where you would put your left hand down to, to stand up. She like leans and then just kind of like plops down like she she's still not used to it. I, I like put Mary. I like and she like yeah. <laughs> she she you give her you give her the like. The yeah, like I put her arm over my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, and she said that she's she's weak as like she is fighting like all of the everything, however long this has been. Um, she's still in definitely in recuperation and healing mode, but uh, she's still mother of <laughs> mother of sons and that many daughters, just not gonna there's there's no like weakness at all either at the same time like you still feel all of that strength um Alphonse and Pilot you guys are sitting outside as uh it'll call ducks his head under you see a strong female Goliath uh it'll call if you would like to describe your mother to them <laughs> <laughs> um she's a little bit taller than me um she does have some hair in like braids um, kind of graying. She, Goliath. She has the red tattoos that I do. Markings of family, clan, specialties, magic, all of the above. Yeah, she has a lot of tattoos. And this, and now notably, one arm. Hmm. But uh, you notice as like. Same by the fire pit, she gestures and she says a word in in giant, and the the bonfire that is outside the house catches even more so. She says, Ilithea, bring us some dinner, please." And she goes, "And find your sister. <laughs> Wherever has she gotten off to this time?" She says, "Please sit. Join join us at our fire." And I, I gesture for um, Alphonse and Pilot to sit too. I greet Ilical's mother with a slight bow, and I say hello, Miss Goliath, ma'am. <laughs> mother, th these are the companions I've been traveling with. This is Ronald, and this is Alphonse. Pleasure to meet you. Bert, uh, Ilical has told us so much about you and your clan. It's nice to finally put a face to the to the stories. And she looks at you. She looks at a pilot. She looks at pilot. It is nice to meet you, young man. She like pats you because you're significant. You're the smallest. Of <laughs> she pats you and is like, "Thank you for looking after my son." And she looks at you and she goes, "And a wizard." It is, and she like reaches out to like shake your hand. Um, Al Al <laughs> Alphonse, Ronald, this is this is my mother, Kazarin. A pleasure. Is, the pleasure is mine. Uh, and she kind of like nods to, to Pilot's bow. She she nods. It's, it's too <laughs> formal. That's the kind of where the pack goes. Sort of like it's okay, little one. <laughs> and, little one. Yeah. To us. <laughs> You're like teenager uh, size. Why am I always uh, the little one? <laughs> but there's like say, I'm gonna be six foot in this campaign, I'm gonna be so tall, and then I'm like, I'm gonna be a Goliath. <laughs> uh everyone else, um the rest of your family joins. Comes by your your other sister. Yeah, hug Orma. From 
wherever she was getting into whatever trouble she was getting into. Uh, are you the eldest? No, Orma's the oldest. Whatever trouble she was really getting into. <laughs> are you the eldest twin or are you the second born twin? I'm I'm the youngest. Okay, you're the yeah. youngest, youngest. Yeah. Uh, little baby boy. A baby. <laughs> oh, what uh, a baby. <laughs> and the rest of the family joins. Um, there is uh, a large amount of like the glass do kind of a assault preserved like meat uh it's not jerky it's it's salt preserved uh like they they keep a large ration of salts you you keep like it's this venison it's like the a haunch of a deer uh and that is placed on a spit and they start roasting it uh, and it's going to be enough for like a small meal it is traditional it's very like hospitable you like family someone visits someone who's been gone a while you got to feed them that's the way it works is is it is it is food and storytelling time and uh you were told all the stories of the things you missed uh over the past however long it has been all of the the troubles that have been seen all of you, you hear more about the story of this this dragon attack uh you hear about the story of the entire tribe coming down the west road and the amount of a ruckus that is caused and uh you've heard about how uh the clan is petitioning the king but the king isn't king's very like not standoffish but like you it, we're like a little kind of tribe, a war not party. His top priority yeah like also like somewhat of a goliath invasion at his doorstep and that's just <laughs> trying to be managed managed a little bit like you guys came down out of the mountains en masse and he's a little like it's it's been nobody's actually officially met with the king it's all bureaucratic hoops and you're like everybody that like your mother talks about and your sister talks about that has gotten anyway and there's over like it's so frustrating it is just not no no, no. Not you way... filled out C a form c98 you were supposed to fill out forms form c22 <laughs> exactly to like see it's the case <laughs> your people are so much more straightforward about how to do things and like they're like we we just got to talk to the king we need like we just want a little bit of backup to get rid of the fucking dragon <laughs> and it's like it's not that easy mm -hmm. I, I tell them a little bit about like my travels and stuff i don't get into all of it right now but just like yeah i'm traveling with this troop and working with them and just kind of going places doing stuff Mm -hmm. vibing eating mushrooms <laughs> eating mushrooms having nothing happen yep very disappointing killing some harpies stuff like that yep you want another yep. mushroom <laughs> <laughs> share with the tribe because if you want another mushroom I'm I'm good <laughs> personally <laughs> you want mushrooms like she, just to you mushrooms I, I just I kind of lean over and I'm like I, it is best not to question them <laughs> alright yeah and so stories are exchanged the sun starts to go down like as, as the day is ending you guys got here just a couple hours before sunset but this is how welcoming greetings go is it takes a minute uh, but you, you've all arrived in the city of Storm's Fall uh, you're outside the city of Storm's Fall currently but you're there. You were welcome to stay the night with the Verdofuel clan. Verdofuel. In Goliath, the clan of the mountain. Giant. Yes. Yeah, I'm I'm planning staying here. This is gonna be interesting because the bedrolls are too big for the other two of you. I've got a bedroll. Yeah, they do have bedrolls. <laughs> How does it feel? Place, place, fold one in half, put mine on top, and it's suddenly it's like a three-layer bedroll. Nice. <laughs> it's like a king-size bedroll. Like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I, I'll say you don't have to keep watch or anything. Like this, this is super mm -hmm. safe territory. This is it'll call it the best sleep you've had in months. I sleep like You're, a goddamn baby. You belong here. It's home. Um, because home has never been. It's never been a place. It's always been with your people. That is that is what home is. Home is the people, not the place because your your people move what do we want to do now that we're in storm's fall though S sleep uh, okay you sleep <laughs> the, the night passes you wake up the next morning you should be you narrate it I'm i do saying. okay yeah, fine okay um dreams dreams 
Can I? We're just heckling him. Do it. Yep. Can I slip into the city? Sure. In the okay. night? Yeah. It's a very yeah. big city. I mean, this is, it's like New York City big. Like, it's big. Big. I've got the whole night. You got a whole night? Travel. Okay. Are you going to, you going to get a rest in and then make trouble? Or are you going to take a point of exhaustion? I don't take a point of exhaustion from okay. lack of rest. You don't? Nope. It says you have on my to eventually. Uh, on my sheet, it says uh, magic can't put me to sleep, immune to disease and exhaustion from lack of rest. But you do have to sleep. That... Let me look at your sheet. I need to, I need to better understand that. Constructive resilience as of in uh, Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron is uh, you don't need to eat, drink, or breathe. You're immune to disease. You don't need sleep, and magic can't put you to sleep. You do still have to take a long rest, though. Because okay. that, that doesn't that that yeah. doesn't mesh with yeah, the, the Unearthed Arcana version had and don't suffer the effects of exhaustion due to lack of rest with the official okay. publication because that's broken cool but i'm just mm -hmm. gonna take that you off do, of you do have to take a, a long rest of at least six hours so can i sit by the fire for or, or rest by the fire for my long rest yes you just have to go into an inert state yeah and then so i get up yeah you'll have um it's, it's six hours so you'll have like uh, between four two and six hours of time to do whatever okay cool I'll do that cool so you, you take a long rest the, re the rest of you take actual rests um, the rest of you mean like the tribe and you two uh, what are you trying to do pilot uh, I try to find a very specific place okay wait <laughs> okay I know. <laughs> I'm assuming I know. It is uh, the... Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Alright, Theo. Let's get informed here. <laughs> weeks later. Uh, is this... That's all you're trying to do in the night? Yes, I want to know where it is. This place, that place it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, make an investigation check. It's a big city. Aren't there, um, didn't you say there was like a checkpoint or something? Mm. Guards? Okay, so the city's weird. So there are three main entrances into the city. There's the East Road, the West Road, and the North Road. The King's Road is the North Road. It's the North Entrance. Um, and the East and the West Roads. The city just kind of begins in the center of the basin. So you have the Towers of Guard. And then there's a little bit more basin of just empty area. There's the area where your clan is posted up around the west, the east gate, the west gate, the west gate. And then the city just kind of starts. So there are major roads in. So like if you were coming in as a trader or something, you kind of got to take those roads. There are other places where you can just walk into the city, though. Like okay. there, there's enough people here where like it would, even it, like it would it would take like immense walls to like really wall in the city to the extent that like would keep people going like it like if they did force people to go in those three entrances there would be some serious traffic but there's like mm -hmm. minor traffic throughout those areas also the rest of the time okay. uh so i'm gonna say pilot, make a stealth check first just for this venture if you're just trying to get in uh, stealth trek is a dirty 20 okay yeah and not Investigation. Investigation is a seven. Yeah, seventeen. Seventeen. You know what kind of establishment you're looking for. So places that are quiet, even in the middle of the night, are not this type of establishment. So you're kind of able to move through the town, move through along rooftops, along alleys, and just you're like you you're good. You have a, you're lucky. You have a very good sense of direction. And there are major landmarks throughout the city where you like you can keep this tower in sight and on your right, you can keep 
this on your left, the mountains are in one direction, so it's really easy to tell which way south. Probably takes you about four hours of wandering through the outer districts, through the new city uh, you were working out in, through neighborhoods and different districts and stuff in the in the new city uh, as you're moving inwards with the city. As you approach the doggo, there's a dog <laughs> uh, that barks really loud. It scares you and me a little bit. <laughs> me being God in physics. Um, <laughs> as you are moving through the center of the city towards the King's Road, the North Road, the major vein headed north of the city, uh, approaching the old city, you've combed the outer districts. You're And this is like, you're kind of moving through it. Like you're like, you're looking for a specific type of establishment. You find an inn and tavern with a, with the picture of a, um, I'm going to describe it. Uh, the, you can't keep it a secret from the rest of the party forever. I'm sure. It's, I know. It's, um, it's an iron rot. It looks like this. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> a bit so of a... we're the cat witchers. And what does the roof of the tavern look like? Is it like a flat? It is. Or is it a? It is one of these. It is a four story tall in a tavern. Is there like a backside that's facing an alley? There is a backside of this in this place and it is not there it's not so like it's on I got to look at my map so I can remember exactly how. It's on a, there's the main vein north road and it's on that there's a main main vein across sort of from it. There's a small small road beside it, and there is it's like a it's not even like an alley. It's like a it kind of has like a, a backyard. In a way. I want to try to get up onto the roof of it, real quick. Okay. Um, make a acrobatics check. I allow this is a, like a side note. Apparently, a lot of DMs make people make strength checks. I believe you can make checks with acrobatics. Acrobats can climb. Mm -hmm. So I think that is, that is a few that is reasonable. Just you don't have to be yeah. strong to climb. You can be good at climbing. Uh, my acrobatics is a seventeen. Um, you struggle. Uh, you walk around the back of in the backyard area. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's a place to like um keep horses, like a few horses, not like a lot, maybe like four or five. Uh. There's one horse stabled ish right here. It's a shed more than anything, like a half shed even. Uh, and you manage to like climb up the horse, kind of like is like half asleep, like looks at you, makes a noise at you. And you like, kind of scramble up onto that and you can scramble up to the top of the building. Uh, very, it was a difficult climb. It is very smooth. It is um, stone, mortared stone, and it's very smooth stone. And as you, you, you do manage to climb up to the roof though. Um, on the roof, uh, could I very gently etch onto the roof? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, like uh, on a uh, like on the chimney or something? Like kind of scratch it in? Yeah, and then I go back down and head back to find Alphonse and Illicol. Okay. You make it it probably takes you probably takes you five hours in total like it's it is most of the rest of the night as you are like reaching the edge of the city like the sun is coming up Alphonse call you guys start to wake up slightly after sunrise both of you roll a d20 for me that's how I'll do this I got cheese dust all over my fingers <laughs> uh, 18 18 okay mm -hmm. uh, 8 Okay, that's good. Uh, Ilkal, in the middle of the night, you wake up to go relieve yourself. Uh, and you notice that Ronald isn't there. Uh, but okay. when you wake up in the morning, Ronald's back. Uh, Alphonse, you sleep through the night soundly. No note of anything. Uh, you do You do have the dulcet sounds of many snoring Goliaths around you. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's like a fucking earthquake. And I slept through that? Okay. I know, like, it's kind of relaxing in a way. It's like white noise. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm. That is not white noise. A giant cat purring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many giant cats purring. And it turns out Ilkal does not snore as bad as his twin sister. Mm -hmm. mm. You, you... It was mentioned at one point, but yeah, no, it's, it's true. Ilkal is actually the most... The more peaceful of snorers of the group. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, and I guess I've gotten used to your snoring, right? Mm -hmm. Elle calls gentle her. <laughs> <laughs> and the sun rises, and you are in the city of Storm's Fall. What would you like to do with your day? Uh, you're here. I don't freaking know. I personally, I would like to talk to the leader of our clan, my uncle. Okay. You ask around. You ask your parent. You ask your mom, and your he's been staying in the city near the the castle. Uh, he's like constantly in line every day trying to get. He's the one like doing the heavy mm, lifting, okay. bureaucracy wise. Uh, they okay. mentioned that he's he's staying at some inn in the inner city. Just do they tell me a name? They're they're unaware of like what okay. which one exactly. They just know he's trying to stay as close as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but like also like within reasonable like amounts of money like mm -hmm. there's like the inner city is the old city it's old money and old mm -hmm. everything and okay the closer you are to the castle the more expensive things are so it's kind of like this weird just doing the best again like to okay. balance distance versus 20 gold a night kind of thing like mm -hmm. it's not the the okay. embroidered pillows <laughs> <laughs> okay. room service yeah I, I I I tell my mother um I I believe my companions and I are going to go into the city for the day. I will see if I can find uncle, but I I will be back by nightfall and I will Okay. Uh she she responds, of course, you know, like you're you're always you're free to come and go as you want. This is mm -hmm. home. What do you guys want to do in the city? What are we specifically looking for? More rations. Okay. Yeah, and the south winds. I don't know if I don't if I really if they'll really do anything for me at this point. I could hold off until after we're kind of done this Ooh. kind of through line. Yeah, I would like some. I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be like the hub for the next little while. I'm assuming we're going to be popping in and out of Storm's Fall. Depends what we do. Yeah. Uh, I definitely. I just, we, yeah, we can head into the. The, the one thing, the one thing is like, um, your clan is trying to get to see the king, mm. and the south winds are kind of an in to at least maybe get some kind of an audience with the king. I was considering trying so, to bribe someone. Hasten mm -hmm. it. I made a decent amount of money adventuring. Yeah. I definitely want to see my uncle. And also, I have one sapphire to sell. I've got two. Um, we can go find your uncle first. Why not? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. As, um, um, as we're walking through the city, I hand Alphonse my snowflake brooch. Alphonse, if you will call offers the, the perpetual snowflake back to you, if you wish. Mm. If you're feeling a little less sprightful. Yeah, I, I look at it and I'm like, that's probably a good call considering the state of your mother. You are very fragile. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I pin it back on. Okay, you have the perpetual snowflake. Uh, as you are walking through the city, uh, where are we? What are we looking for? We're going. We're going to find your uncle. Yeah. Or we're looking for. If we want to go to like shops first, we can. First. Are we shopping? Yeah. Are we uh, searching. We. I don't know. I think um, he's probably going to be waiting in line and waiting in line for a long time. So maybe if we like find him and chat with him, we'll see where he's at, okay. and then we can kind of reconvene all right okay. yeah so we'll head for the old city okay um traveling through the west road uh you are stopped at the gate and just kind of asked your business and just some check over questions it'll call your there's a bunch of glass outside so like this like guys like okay another one heading to the city they're not they're not as like worried about bandits or anything like that like there's there is a s s secure area like it is there is enough police here to handle this uh, or like there's just too many people where that wouldn't be too pro too much of a problem. Uh, you're told not to make any trouble. You're the you're the most armed Goliath that's like come in. 
uh, like most of your tribe are hunters and like wildernessy people. You're outfitted, mm. uh, so you're you're even like a little bit of like a pushback there is like keep your keep your sword in its sheath kind of thing. Uh, Alphonse, you're just kind of like looked over and looked up and down and just fucking wealthy people. Uh, <laughs> and pilot, you're just a person, like right, whatever, just a dude. Uh, and you're allowed in. You enter into the old city through the west road entrance. And oh, it's big. Like even the old the, or the new city is is big. Like these are two three story buildings and and rows of houses and there are people here and there's so many different people. You see um, people in traditional Surati dress. You see people from Surat. You see the the dark hair um piercings and ear piercings and the like braided beards and um bronze skin of the people of Surat. You see um monks in like fighting monks with like taped knuckles and outfits uh befitting those who are incredibly physically fit. You see a few like shady people. You see some people in some like really long overcoats where you're like, I bet there's a knife under there. Um you see wealthy people with with collars and and poofs and like fancy hats with long feathers in them women in like day dresses that are that get like wealth even this far out in the city but at the same time you see like impoverished and you see like milk maids kind of things you see women like carrying water from from like the different like wells throughout the city to their to their homes you see uh some people have like uh, little like there, there's like one guy with a cart who has like just a bunch of chickens in cages. Uh, you see like one guy with like fresh produce and he's he's headed in in towards like the market district. You see somebody's leading like three cows all tied together in towards the market district. Um, bustling is like the word. There are there's people everywhere. You see uh, people of all races too. You see some high elves. You see wood elves. You see a couple of your your tribe. You see a couple of Goliaths not of your tribe. Uh, you see, uh, as you're walking, there's a tiefling um, with like perfectly red skin and uh, horns that kind of surround on their head a little bit, just kind of sitting upright. You see other half elves that look a lot like Alphonse, the semi pointed ears, and they look like just too pretty of humans. Um, you see a few dwarves like arguing over like there's like one he's got a sword and he's like rah, 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 and like they're they're arguing about something in dwarvish and it's just chatter. Um, can I say uh, can I can I be like actively looking for like the the symbol of the south winds like as we're just walking through? Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, make a investigation check because that's active. Nat twenty. Okay. Nice. Call it. Uh, you, you do not see it on the west side of the city. Plus three. You are. That's fine. No, like I, I just, yeah. I just want to be looking for it. We're not going yeah. there right now. But just as as you walk in towards the center of the city down the west road, you do not see it anywhere on this side of the city. You're fairly certain they are not on the west side of the city. Yeah. Uh. You see a few like uh. There, like there, there are stores and there are stalls outside of stores. There's, there's like a, a young woman selling like bouquets of flowers. There's a, there's a gnome selling just like, just looks like mechanical things. There are gears and and chains and things that are ticking and like there's a cuckoo clock. Like there's all kinds of. He's <laughs> just eccentric and just like, just and it's there's this mix of common and and no mission chatter and he's just all energy. And as you travel further into the city, it gets more dense and more active and more tall. And uh, it looks like cleaner. And the the like road, which was like dirt and stone, gives way to cobblestone. And there are like paved roads. And then you reach the wall to the old city. I mean, you've probably been walking for 40 minutes into the city. It's just that crowded. There's so many there are carts and horses and everybody. You get bumped by a few people in passing. Uh, can I keep yeah, my... 
You uh -oh. shook his head. All right. I'm keeping my coin purse closer to me. Me too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like I actively <laughs> have my hand on my coin purse right now. All right. Now. Yeah, Same. you get bumped by a few people. It's fine. <laughs> um. I know what I've done. You have actively yeah. mentioned pickpockets before, Noah. I have so. actively mentioned pickpockets before. You're right. I appreciate. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the, the doing doing stuff. Um. As uh, you reach the, it's a gate, sort of. It's not even. It's not a gate. It's a break in the wall. So there is a small wall dividing the old city from the new city. Uh, it's probably eight to ten feet tall. It's it's wide enough where somebody can walk it, but it's not like a. It would be useful if like there was an invading army in the city at funneling enemies into certain areas. It's not. It's not meant to like keep people out there. Like you could, like people with like bad intentions could scramble over the wall and stuff. Like you just gotta have like a few people on the wall to notice that people are doing that kind of thing. But there's so many buildings and stuff. Like you can jump from a lot of the rooftops onto the wall and then over onto a rooftop on the other side, and it's like sprint, skip, land on the on the next roof over, and potentially pilot. You feel that thieves do that <laughs> occasionally, because um, nobody seems appears to be like actively like marching the wall. It was maybe like long ago the city ended here and they erected a wall for like fortification sake, but the city has long since outgrown that. Like even the, the buildings here at the at the dividing wall seem fairly old. Like older than the cities you've seen in other other older than the buildings you've seen in other cities in the reaches. Major cities at least. Continue traveling down the West Road and eventually you reach the market square. Uh you realize that the market district is on the west side of the city, on the west side of the palace, and it's, it's a castle, one in a palace. It is a palace, but it is a castle. It's a fortification. Uh, you realize the market district is on this side of the city, and this is a city where it's a market day every day. <laughs> like, it is that big of a city. There is, like, the market day, but there's always something going on, and there is so much going on. There are people hawking all kinds of goods and things, and produce and weapons and armor and everything and it's active uh and there you've seen plenty of king's guard and there's there's order amongst the chaos to some extent uh you haven't seen anyone like you haven't seen anything that's overly out of control uh it appears like well policed at least uh as you make it to the market district the castle is uh just you have to travel from the market square to the center of the city and then to the to the palace square and then you would have to enter through that way so you, you travel along the road between the market square and the palace square and it's you there's so much diversity it's so it's shocking in a way like alphonse you're like yeah this is this is what it's supposed to be like it's weird that like we've been in places where it's just mostly human all the time this is i mean it's probably like 75 percent human but the other 25 percent, it's just like maybe maybe even 70 percent human um and then or i don't know the, like the distribution is like way more diverse than where these places that you've been that's been like 90 percent human this is like there are humans but there are dwarves and gnomes and tieflings and half elves and elves and both kinds of elves and both kinds of dwarves and halflings and gnomes and you you name it they're, they're around you've seen like six dragonborn uh and like as far as like temples go there there appear to be like different temples to to like multitude of gods you've seen like at least three different temples for three different gods or goddesses uh as you approach you reach the palace square and it is so right at the edge of the palace square on the far south which is it feels like you're heading like up to it uh is it Your backwards it's, map <laughs> the backwards map yeah uh everything goes south in the northern reaches really uh, the only way to go is south. North <laughs> is to the nothingness. Um, there is the major fortification that is the fortress of the Stormborn, and is this massive concentric castle. There are at least three walls before the like. Well, there there are two walls in the wall of the actual castle, and there are a couple of baileys in between. And there are probably from what you tell, there are buildings within each of those baileys that are stables and barracks. And everything else and then in the very center there's probably a whole bunch of stuff and there are probably gardens and everything else who fucking knows like it is it's a 
it is a palace. Uh, and the massive gate is right there, and it's open. But there are a few there are a few guards that like manage like who goes in and out. No, like lineup or anything here, at least. Not the very outside, no. Okay. Yeah, well, I guess I'll head up to the guards at that gate. He's uh he's standing there. He's got a pike. Uh, he is fully outfitted. He is these guards are wearing Kingsguard colors, but it is it's more regalia than it's uniform. It's not like well, it's more regalia than uniform, I should say. Like uniforms are functional to some extent. These are a little these are a little flashy. Like there's there's like alternating stripes and like there's a nice belt that goes with it. And he's got a helmet that like it's got like a, a point and it's like appropriately like decorative. And his even his pike, I guess, has like a little like a blue and silver thing. Let's get a little a frill thing. It goes, halt! What business have you in the palace? I would like to petition the king. I am looking for my uncle, the leader of the Verdiofil Goliath tribe. He looks you up and down. And he... Do you have papers? The Goliath are not ones for papers. We are not allowed to let anyone in the palace without appropriate documentation. What sort of documentation would that be? Generally, you would need a, a document of petition for the king received from Amir, Stadir, some other government official of the locale or a letter or some written proof that you are with your uncle we are I am aware you are a Goliath I have no way of knowing that you are who you say you are or I can't just let people in that that is <laughs> <laughs> that that is fair enough. I understand. Thank you. <laughs> he's got, I... Like he's got like this. He's super dry. Like this is something like yes. Like it's it's like when you get asked like a the same like dumb question enough times like at work and you're just like <laughs> they're with the pens you dipshit like <laughs> you're looking for pens. Did you try the aisle labeled pens? <laughs> It's like you see into my soul, Noah. Yeah. I feel uh, it. Just... <laughs> I I ask him, I guess, since we're being turned away anyway, would you happen to know where the South Winds reside in the city? South Winds? The trading family? That's the one. Uh, they live... Why do you ask? He, like, he was ready to tell you, and then he remembered his job. <laughs> it's <just> like, <laughs> basic... like, this guy, is, he's kind of gullible. Like, he's like... Maybe he's new. <laughs> I, I I have a letter of introduction from uh from their outpost out in the Rury Crossroads. Uh, some some urgent trading. Um, mm, it's not quite deception. Make a persuasion check. Come on. Charisma. Oh no. <laughs> that one. <laughs> I do have the letter of introduction. I'm not lying about that. <laughs> he says, they live in the East District. You should know that if you're actually trying to meet with them. That's all he's going to tell you. He's not going to give you like useful directions. You, you technically didn't find out anything you didn't already know. OK. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Me, me a little. He's giving you like a little bit of like a look, like you're 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 a rich guy, richly dressed, wearing some jewelry, but not like your accent's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um. When I see that interaction, can I, uh, 
sort of stand behind Elkal over his shoulder and give the guard a look of don't give my friend a funny look. He's just asking a simple question. Kind of look. Sure. Make a intimidation check. Don't in don't don't question my friend. I got a nineteen. Is it nice? No, a dirty twenty for intimidation. Okay. He kind of backs off a little bit. Like he's he was kind of like front, and he kind of like settles it down a little bit. It's not not liking it though. I I am sorry for my companions. If you see Chief Madak, could you please tell him Ilikal is looking for him? Madak, got it. M A D A K. And he looks at you and he says, I will. He says, Generally, court lets out around 3 p.m., though. If you were looking to meet somebody that was turned away, that would be about the time. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Right, we can go to uh, shops until then. Yep. So it's, it's probably, I mean, it might be like 10 a.m. right now. Like, it's, you guys have, like, ventured through the city. Um... How many rations are we currently sitting at, Theo? Um, <laughs> yeah. Nine days. Eight or nine. nine from, it would be like six days. I was thinking like ten, but yeah. No, probably like six okay. or seven. Because we, did, we did just travel for a few days, so. Yeah. Okay. okay, so what exactly are we looking for? Um, Big city. We're talking... There's stuff to be found here. Like, you mentioned a gear shop. I think it was like run by a gnome or a dwarf. Like the, the little mechanical? Oh, yeah. yeah. It was like a, he had like a... Like a produce stand kind of thing. Of just a little stuff. cart. Yeah, it's a, yeah, like outside of a store. It wasn't like a, a full-on store. You got a bunch of stuff, but there is there there if there if there is something mechanical to be found, this is you there is this is the place. I would like to find a mechanical. Okay. Um. Make an investigation check. Investigation is a sixteen. Okay, that's good enough. Uh, pilot or wrong kind of gets on like a like I got a thing I want to find. Um, within like 30 minutes uh, having traveled through the market district you, you got kind of an idea that the west side of town is where a lot of trade is done there are still stores and things on other parts of town all over the place like there, there's like produce stores everywhere so like you're not going to walk all the way to the Tims on the other side of Toronto uh, <laughs> mm, that pronunciation Chris ah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto yeah Toronto. 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 Uh, there, uh, pilot, within like 30 minutes, you find a store with a gear outside. It's got, got a gear and a box, and it, the sign says the Tinker's Toolbox. Uh, I enter. Okay, you enter. It's kind of, it's oddly lit, is what I should say. <laughs> um, it's not candlelight but it's not magical light either it's Ooh. kind of like a it's like fluorescent there's a, like it's like a fluorescent light it's weird um it's not what you're used to in any like it's it's kind of this like weird hybrid it's a little too technical is it what i'm used to no it is and it's not magical it's just like yeah but eberron not exactly it's kind of like um you know those propane torches that you can you know, like screw on and it's got the sure. lamp and you can turn it to like super bright? It's that kind of like very bright white light. It's not like warm. It's cool white flame light. Oh, uh, you hear? Hello. Hello. Welcome. What can I do for you? You don't see anybody. He's a parrot. Oh, run something. <laughs> Near. Any. And I was not prepared. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. over the uh, <laughs> counter. Counter up, up, like up to like chest height is a gnomish. Like he's kind of old, 
like maybe like like late late middle age. He goes, "Hello, how can I help you?" Finally, an NPC I don't hate. <laughs> <laughs> this is your new best friend. Uh, new party member, just to make Noah do this voice all the time. <laughs> Please, he, he will. <laughs> It is kind of a pain, but he can do it. <laughs> Hello. Can I help you? you? Uh, experience with body parts. That, t- take Elaborate. it back. <laughs> Elaborate or take it Hurry back. Hurry up. <laughs> uh, do you have experience with arms? <laughs> You're asking for, oh my god. <laughs> You can't walk up to a stranger and say you have experience with body parts. What do you mean? (laughs) I'm my own. But Um, I'm not a. This is a. This is a. uh, This is a mechanical. We're not. We don't deal with the biological here much. Could I uh, gently. Show him my wrist. Ooh. Ooh. That's his noise. Spicy. He goes, Ooh. And he, come here, come here. And he, like, reaches out and he grabs your hand. And it pulls cool. you, he, he, like, pulls. And he's surprisingly strong for a little guy. Like, he's like, Ooh. He goes, Oh, how? Oh, how? And he's like, and he starts, like, poking and prodding. And, like, uh, from a pocket comes, like, a, like, a, a magnifying glass that he can sit on his arm. And he goes, Oh, very how do you he looks at you and he he like how odd how does it work your arm it's completely oh it's your where did you lose it how did you do how how who made what I'm so the intricate design I fell off a mountain and it <laughs> ripped my arm off. <laughs> Was it 49 hours, 94 hours, 36 hours? What's off the, a mountain. 128. 128 hours. There we go. Enough. One seven, of those numbers. 127. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Off a mountain. How terrible. Urgh. Who made it? How? I, I lost my memory it. in the fall. Oh. It really, yeah. Oh, how unfortunate. It's a struggle. He goes, oh, well, I, I have no experience with this, but you're, this is fascinating. Can you remove it? And he like, mm-hmm. he like reaches up and he taps your shoulder and, tink, 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 and he's like, how cool. I'm so, I, I'm so sorry. Sorry, I'm not. I don't mean to be rude. My bad. Uh, I just you're so. It's so fascinating. That is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't tell anyone about this, that'd be wonderful. Okay. But <laughs> yeah. if you're able to replicate something similar to this. Hmm. Maybe make it for something that's a little bigger than me, like maybe uh, like a. Well, I, yeah. What what is its power source? It doesn't. I. He's hold on, and he runs back into the back, and you hear, ting 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 ting, and you hear a little bit of chattering of. Here. Woman! Stop! I'm busy! I have customers! And you're. Wife! And it's it's like the Muppets are in the next room over. <laughs> and he, he comes like out, he, out again. He has this, he has a sphere. You know, the closest thing that I've seen is this. When he holds it up and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's 
It's not as big as a basketball. It's probably like a cantaloupe size. And it's filled with water. And inside, perpetually swimming, is a small mechanical fish with a single, like, moat of energy that appears to be powering it. It says, This is the... There, her, 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 there we go. This is the closest thing that I've seen. And I honestly don't know how it works. But it's pretty cool. <laughs> Looks like a little fishy. Yes. It is indeed a fish. If you... <laughs> Study the arm. Uh huh. Can you replicate it? The voice Maybe. crack doesn't. The voice crack doesn't happen. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. I have some ex some experience with mechanical, but most most contraptions aren't self powered. That's that's the the hard part is. The arm. Um, the self the battery <laughs> essentially that's what we call it uh what about something like clockwork well even clockwork has to be wound the energy yes. in the springs but that but, that could apply that could work no it could but how do you make clockwork not perpetually you you wind a watch and the watch goes. You can't wind an arm. Even the fish. <laughs> and he says, if you watch over time, it changes motion. It's very old. And this, hold on. There it is. This knowledge has been lost to us. Can... Mm. Mm -hmm. Do I have, like, any knowledge of the workings? I think it's like... I feel like I would know some things. I think it, it's kind of implied that my family either kind of, like, benefited from more Forged in the past, or... I don't know. He at least you knows know? of them as, like, yeah. a race. Any, like, kind of hint? Like, I, I'm kind of seeing, like, somebody going back in time and showing a blacksmith a motorcycle, <laughs> right? Okay. And, like, they've got no idea what to do. <laughs> um, Make a knowledge arcana check. Uh, 22. Mm, it's pretty nice. solid. You understand that Warforged, from your world, Warforged, enchanting something makes a golem. And golems are sentient with direction. Like you have to, like an iron golem or a stone golem or a clay golem, you have to give it motive. You have to say, here, mm -hmm. you, you are Yourself. what you are, do your thing. Warforged are a, in their creation, were given this like life energy and sentience came from that spontaneously in a way and the warforged are conscious and in as much alive as like any other humanoid or person they respond independently they when asked to do something they 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 can choose to say no but generally are are fairly hospitable and they think and they learn unlike golems mm -hmm. but I mean from a function point of view like talking pneumatics in the limbs or within the limbs it's a mixture of the like if, if you if you had to explain to somebody like how thought leads you to close and open your hand you can't Really. Think like about you, that all the fucking time. You just, yeah, like you can't, 
you just you close your hand, right? So within the limbs, it is instead of blood, is just straight magical essence but like, moving these things. Mm -hmm. Like, like you can explain like the muscles and the sinews and like physically how it works in an arm. Like, there's yeah, got to be something. Similar. Like if if you were to have like two syringes in a pipe, like or in a tube, I could like push one and the other just to kind of get the ball rolling type of thing. Just like a little bit of push of. Fluid would like, and I think we're completely over engineering this. I think like strapping a sword to your mother's shoulder would be sufficient. <laughs> but I mean, we're here and we're having this conversation. It's interesting. <laughs> to to accomplish a pilot level appendage, yeah, like mm -hmm. a functioning arm she could control. You would have to be able to bind her harnessing of arcane power to a mechanic like you could have a clockwork like if you put all the clockwork pieces in place like mm. that would cause things to move you would still have to somehow bind her arcane essence to that somehow like you understanding warforge knowing that 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 arcane essence that it could be a soul it's so mm. hard to harness what that is You would have to somehow bind her existence and understanding to something mechanical. Now, it's possible you could, like, even just, like, your general intelligence, like, he, this, this individual could make something, like, a false arm that's, like, a mannequin arm mm -hmm. that you can, you can do something here and it'll close and it'll open. Mm -hmm. he, he's almost certainly capable of doing that. You see plenty of things that are, like, he's said like clockwork, you know, you wind a spring. But like to have something that independently responds to thought mm -hmm. and of that is something that's something even I don't even cover. Yeah, beyond like it's yeah. it's so hard to it's it's so much more than it is magic. <laughs> like mm -hmm. yeah. he, he says he says that he goes, I there it is. He could. I could make. What if it's just like a stiff Something arm? What solid. if it just made like an right? I could. Yeah. I could do that. Like a statue. And you can at least like punch with it, right? <laughs> you could give Perhaps it a pretty good whack. With hmm. a grasp. Like that could a be claw grabber thing. That could be triggered, but for a fully independent functioning limb, that is not doable. A lot. Mm -hmm. It would be cool. <laughs> Thank you for asking, Ronald. Thank you for your help, sir. You're welcome. Can I help you with anything else? Do you have any cool things? I have lots of cool things. What are you looking for specifically? Stuff. Okay. One second. He goes back and crazy. he starts, he's just kind of like, he starts scurrying around and he like thumps something up on the table and you, and you hear like a bunch of drawers open and another thing goes out on the table and he goes, this. And he's gesturing and he goes, lantern but better he takes it and he, he points it at you and he presses a button and it's just like just right in your face and he goes can't help one hand right is the sun it's a reaction of phosphorus in the chamber it'll last six months Honestly, a flashlight would be kind of useful for D&D. Yeah. &D. This is the second time Noah's been trying to peddle a flashlight, just for the record. Is it? <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yes. <know>. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, or this. I got this. This is cool. And he, he sets it down, and it's like a... It's like a... It's like a, a ring. Looks like. And he, he, like, pulls out... He, like, opens the drawer, and he's got, like, a, a dowel, a wooden dowel, like, just a stick. 
And he goes, watch. And he goes, and he goes, and he goes, it's the birdcage. <laughs> what? How cool. <laughs> Okay, okay, got one more. And he like pulls down and he like reaches up and goes, Have you ever been rock climbing? Because this right here. He goes, It works like a heavy crossbow. She he pulls out a like a lever and he says, You you crank it and it aims and it'll dig three feet into stone, up to three hundred yards away. Somebody buy this. <laughs> You touch a rope, you can climb right up a walk, rock, rock wall. Pretty cool. How much for that one? This one? <laughs> you don't look much like a rock climber. Exactly. That's why he needs the help. That's why I need the help. <laughs> 49 gold. Cave diving. 49 gold, not bad. So guys, here's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Haven't seen the last of this dragon. Dragons in mountains. Got to climb that mountain. Might help. I don't need that to climb a mountain. Okay. Well. Alphonse does. Just get on my back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Very fascinating. It's pretty cool. Because I had a stupid idea mm -hmm. and I can't shake it. So like, what if you built like a prosthetic and then you cast Find Familiar and it's a snake <laughs> and you put the snake inside the prosthetic and then you can move it. I'm down with that. I was just thinking like telekinesis or like um, whatever the fuck that hand spell is called, Mage Hand. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and then you'll see you Alphonse and oh, you're not Climber. Got another thing. You look like you know magic. I got something. Let's see it. He, he reaches in and Jordy pulls it out, and it's like it's like this big, and it's kind of like a stick. And he goes, and he goes, extendable wand. <laughs> <laughs> and what exactly is the function of an extendable wand? <laughs> Easier to keep in your pocket than a regular wand. <laughs> Very cool. And he goes, goes <laughs> at least a quarter of the size. And like he holds it up to you. He said, look really cool. <laughs> <laughs> you, tall one. One more thing. I got something. That doesn't get many visitors. <laughs> He's just happy to have customers. <laughs> this one. I keep special. He like reaches into a drawer out of the way and he like presses it. You see him like pressing finagle with some stuff. He sits down and he, and he sits in and he goes, Goggles. <laughs> Goggles. They're very good. And he Goggles. goes, and the lights go out, and it's really dark in here. And he says, "Follow the sound of my voice. Reach down, hand open, hand open." <laughs> <laughs> like you, you feel him like tugging on your hand. Open. And he says, and the goggles set in your hand. He goes, "Put them on." I put them on very haltingly. Uh, you, like they're they are just big. They're like just big enough. To I just kind of like raise them to my eyes. Oh, I don't put them on your eyes. Yeah, them on. Uh, and you can see in the room. It's it is like almost pitch black in here. Like the like shades dropped when he clapped too. Alphonse, you're fine. Pilot, it's dark. Um, and he's like very nice. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> That could be useful. I could see that one being useful. Honestly, yeah, but there are two of us without dark vision, so one of us would just suffer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have questions to ask. How, how much goes, are these? Back on. The lights come back on, the um, the blinds go up, and he goes, I call that the clapper. 
Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> These are very expensive. That's my only pair. These? 100 gold. I gently put them back down. <laughs> Do you have questions, Seth? I lean over a little bit. Um, and I point at the dark vision goggles. Yeah. And I ask, Where'd it go? How did you come to find that? Reese? Yeah. I made them. Can you make a version of those that are like lenses, but you put them in your eye? I... Probably not. <laughs> I can make them really small. Make the little glasses. But can you put it in your eye? Ask no. him for like a monocle, just for his... Disconnected ones. Yeah, sim simplify it. <laughs> Do you well, have just the yeah, lens? Well, I could, I could, in theory, you know, they're, they're goggles, so I could deconstruct them a little bit. Maybe make, like, two individual ones if you wanted just, like, fancy glasses instead of goggles. Fine. Yeah, sure. He can, yeah, he can make you eyeballs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How much would that cost? For a special construction? It's less uh, material, though. Yeah, but I gotta make them. But power source and stuff, you gotta figure that stuff out. 150 gold. Not bad. It's not How good. How much gold do you have, Alphonse? <laughs> uh, almost enough, actually. I do have enough. I look at the little... Or, I don't want to be condescending. I mean, he's I, little, I, he's a gnome. <laughs> I look at the little guy. Yep. What if I cut you a deal? What kind of deal? I'll let you study my arm to your heart's, the heart's pleasure. Give me a little Ooh. discount. That's a pretty good deal. That's pretty cool. Stop <laughs> it! <laughs> We've gone too far. <laughs> 110 gold. Deal. Okay. It's gonna take a week. I have to I lay them I have to lay the lenses out at night. Enchantment. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Do you want the payment up front? No. I trust you. You're weird, but cool. <laughs> You're pretty cool too, little sir. Thank you. Um, I, I kind of just like lean up behind Ronald and uh, very quietly could you ask him if we could get a discount for the goggles too what about the goggles sir mm, kind of looks like, make a charisma check uh, Me? persuasion I got a dirty 20 on hey. persuasion could do 90 guard That's not cool. my. That, that, that is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I, I I feel like if Pilot's gonna have them, I should have some as well, so we don't I have can to give use you my lights. two gemstones to offset the cost a little bit. Twenty gold. If you want them? Yeah. I don't know how much I'll need to like potentially bribe someone. So. Who are we bribing. I've got this, uh, hopefully, in the bag. As, as If the dice are on my side, hopefully we can get in there. <laughs> Alright, um... It's a deal. I'll, I'll take those goggles. Nice. Okay. Would you like them wrapped, or are you gonna wear them out? I'll, I'll just... I'll just take... I'll just take them. Cool. He, like, holds right. a bit. Little hand. Very little hand compare in comparison. <laughs> I hand him 90 gold pieces and it hurts Illicals and mine soul. Thank you. You now have goggles of night. While wearing these lenses, you have dark vision out to a range of 60 feet. If you already have dark vision, wearing the goggles increases its range by 60 feet. It's a wondrous oh. item. It's uncommon and does not require 
attunement. Hmm. Are you taking my two sapphires? Got them? If you're offering them. No. I, it should I be mean, fine. Nice. Yeah, okay. I mean, I always have them yeah, if we... Yeah, it should be fine. Would you be interested in purchasing some sapphires? <laughs> me? Sapphire? Yeah. Well, I let imagine me say, they well, might be of come use. Come here. Come here. Give, give, me, mm -hmm. give me the sapphire. Yep, yep. <laughs> and I, I hand him my one, too. I hand him my one, too. <laughs> We're all just <laughs> chucking over sapphires. How much are they worth? Ten. 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 Each? All of them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ten each. I could use these. I could give you like ten gold each. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right, nice. here you go. All right, now we don't have to go to a bank. You're welcome, guys. Hell yeah. <laughs> Anything else? I will be back in a week. Okay. This guy's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Precisely. I imagine he showed off all of his all of his good stuff, so yeah, that's, that's probably <laughs> yeah. enough. That's as risky as pilots gonna get with showing off who they are. Mm-hmm. <laughs>